Okay, so it is March 2nd, 2022, 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> As you can see, I have to get some fluorescent lights. I really like to change that ballot, but anyway, you, this is my counter. Okay, so we're going to start our day. Uh, Lady P, you were asking about the Bernstein Bears. There it is. There's the book. Can you see? Oh, my Lord. It's the type of flashlight. Do you see? It's A-I-N. Only, I think, many of us were told to pronounce it as Stein. And that's why we get confused. Right? And then comes along that Mandela effect. I know that's what you were asking to see the book for. Okay. This, uh, these books are like, oh my god. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll look and we'll see when it was printed. So in the meantime, I'm just starting my day, people. <laughs> okay. This is the, call this video the kitchen on the fly. Okay. So I wash some jars. Can you see? <laughs> right? Oh, wow. All right. There's those lids for Amari. I have to wash those today. I'm uh, cutting off the ends of green onions and I've got them over around the corner in here starting just for fun. You can see what's going on over there. Okay, so I've got to do that today. Get Andre to cut those and get them into these little pots. All right, I'm just trying to be productive here. All right, so let me put this on me for a second. Uh, what can I do? I might have to turn this off and come back. I don't think this is going to work. Uh, I know. Hold on. Okay. This is how I have to work. Right? But that's okay. Can't let it stop you, right? Printed in New York. Uh, copyright. 1987. That's when Sierra was born. Sierra, my son Brooks was born in 84, and Sierra was born in 87. By the time Mark Kane, who was born in 91, he's my second son, middle son, middle child. By the time he was going into grade two, he had already read through the whole series. That's how he really learned to read, was reading the whole series. Right? So by the time he went into halfway into grade two, oh, he was already reading at a college level. He was reading old English books. And at the school, they didn't like it. And then they made him read Bernstein Bears all over again in grade two, even though he had already read them over and over again. That's the history of the Bernstein Bears in my house. <laughs> right? And needless to say, you know, I still have basically the set. Right? I'll have to bring them up, try and get Andre to read them. So anyway... Today, what we're doing here in basically the dark is, and it's pretty easy peasy stuff, it's just manual go through the motions kind of thing, right? So that's why it's just kitchen on the fly, okay? Um, is we're going to open up the box of cornmeal that I have, and probably these um, black eyed peas and try and get them into containers. I have another 50 pounds of cornmeal coming, another 25 pounds of black eyed peas coming from the States, 
and five pounds of cashews, raw cashews, with mostly Amari on mine. Right? So I got to get on it because it's going to be delivered soon. And I'm already prepping Tisha for more jars. Speaking of jars, you know, you can see, right? I just showed you. I got jars that I'm going to fill up today. And then I'm going to wash some more as I'm prepping Tisha to go get me some more. <laughs> right? Because of this other stuff coming. Because, you know, I have to decide. And I, and I, and I actually want to order, and I probably will, people. I probably will. Another 50 pounds of rife, I think it's called rife, rife wheat. I'll have to double check it because it just, it just came in. It was, it, they ran out and then I got an email telling me that they, they have a new batch. Okay. So if I get another 50 pounds of wheat, now the thing about wheat, I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't like to, I don't want to say like, but in terms of storing wheat long term, but I'm no expert on it, okay? I'm just going on my gut, you know, what my gut tells me to do. Uh, I, I've, and, and space, there, there's, and, and, you know, you have to factor that in because when you're dealing with 50 pounds, 100 pounds, another 25 pounds times three separate bags, right? <laughs> You know, before you know it, you got a lot of poundage stacking up, right? So, you you know, you have to think about that when you do long-term food prep. And again, if our governments, governments more than one, weren't doing what they're doing, people, I know for a fact I wouldn't have gone to the extreme that I did in 2021. Now, mind you, I'm slowing down right like the height of my food prep when it came to like the uh the beans and the wheats and the oats and that type of thing that's all pretty much maxed in terms of i don't have to do what i did in 2021 however i still feel and think through common denomination through you know through through you know it's not just a feeling that i base my decision on in other words, when I decide to purchase another 50 pounds of rife wheat, okay, because I'm like this close. I'm conniving in my head how I can come up with that $114 because I'm maxed out financially right now at this moment where it's not going to phase me per se. So I'm like plotting and scheming and I'm like, okay, well, Tisha's got to go out and get me some fluorescent lights and you know and I was going to put a little money in this bank to do that but instead I could take this money and put it in that bank and then that gives me that $114 that I need to buy the wheat and then once I get the wheat how am I going to store it for long term because we know I'm not going to be eating it anytime soon now what's so special about this wheat is one it's complete completely organic where it hasn't been um, adulterated through genetic engineering so in other words it's an ancient wheat that hasn't been altered it's a heirloom wheat I guess you could say and with it comes now I don't know a lot about this stuff but Assuming that the world doesn't blow up anytime soon, I'd like to think that maybe within the next six months, we can talk about different wheats, what they are, basically, you know, where they come from and what they're good for, you know, in terms of what types of breads and cakes and, you know, cooking and that kind of stuff, right? Because the rife wheat, I'm pretty sure it's rife, because it's an ancient wheat, um, it's high in gluten and you can use it for crackers and bagels and bread and I mean there's just a number of things that you can use it for versus a different other wheat like a soft white wheat or hard red wheat or whatever the spelt the spelt is different spelt 
I know is easier, is the most easiest to digest out of all wheats, but I think you have to combine spelt with another flour, right? So that's what I mean by, you know, in six months from now, hopefully we'll be able to talk about the different types of wheats and what they're best used for as we kind of like start to use this stuff because it's one thing buying it, prepping it, putting it away, and then starting to have to grind the wheat and use the wheat, right? I mean, ultimately it's going to get to that point because my cupboards, counters, my counters won't be full of jars, okay? That's the goal, <laughs> right? But, you know, with with farmers having problems in general with with having to produce large amounts of grains and that kind of thing, you know, the more the individual household is less dependent on other agencies to provide them with that flour or bread. Because if you go to a food bank, you're not going to get a bag of wheat. What you're going to get is a few loaves of bread or you might get lucky and get a bag of flour. Whereas I probably have in my house through the grinding of wheat, I don't want to say 1,000 bags of flour because I haven't grinded it all up yet. But, you know, you're, 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 up, you're in the upper hundreds of how many bags of flour you can get from grinding everything that I've bought over the last two years and a bit, right? With 2021 being at the height of my so-called buying frenzy. Right? Because, you know, just like with the cornmeal, in 2021 or 2019, or I'd have to go back and whatever, you know, when I bought whole corn, right? That's when I first started to kind of do a little bit of food. Like, I already had the food prep, but getting into the grains and that kind of thing, right? Um... I haven't seen it for a year and a half now, people. That's why I recommend that you go out and buy cornmeal. At least that. Because through cornmeal, if you want, you can grind that up and make the corn flour. Right? And cornmeal will last a long time just by itself in a jar, in a cupboard. I know that for a fact because I have cornmeal that I don't really ever do anything with. Right? Tisha apparently likes cornmeal. So I gave her a whole box of cornmeal and I gave her a whole tub of honey, right? And, you know, in the meantime, I've got my own cornmeal, but I'm buying it not so much for cornbread as I am grinding it up and making flour and adding it to other things, right? But sooner or later, if things keep going the way they're going, with the major producers of corn, who many of them are going into soya bean, assuming that they can even find the beans now, the seeds to plant the fields, right? And are having to go into alternative uh, you know, how they treat the land because they don't have their roundup anymore to help them to maintain weed control. So they're having to bring in new methods in order to fertilize the ground as well as irrigate it and everything else that they've been doing for umpteen years that has now been disrupted because of what's going on in the economy and, you know, the world uh, commerce between countries. You know, we're not feeling the shortage yet, per se, where next year we might. More so. So, get some cornmeal. Put it away. And now when it comes to storing, cornmeal I would put in a jar. That's what we're going to do today. Okay? Just because it's a different, it's different than wheat. Where wheat, I have no problem. This is where my gut tells me it's okay to put it in a brown lunch bag and then put it in a vacuum seal bag and vacuum seal it, put it into a box, 
right? So you've got three layers of protection on the wheat. Think about it. You've got the paper bag, which helps to maintain on moisture because it, it will go into the bag before it would go into the wheat. This is what I'm assuming, right? And then you've got the plastic that's kept, that keeps pretty much everything out, right? And then you put it in a box, which again, if it's in a cool room, which Auntie Chimay's room is, can get very cold, right? Just through coldness comes moisture, but the box itself will be an insulation to that moisture. And then you cover it with a blanket. I mean, that wheat will sit for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Your only enemy in that situation would be mold. If it for some reason started to mold inside the paper bag itself. We won't know until I actually get into some of those prepackaged vacuum sealed wheat packs that I have of various different types of wheats when we get into that making of the bread. Right? But I feel confident I feel confident that doing it that way is suffice for long term storage, right? And it takes up well, I wouldn't say less weight, but it definitely takes up less weight because jars can get heavy, right? But the thing about jars, though, is, and we already went through this with a couple of my past videos, where on the inside of the jar, it looked like it was molding up when, in fact, it wasn't. It was the flour removing itself from the pasta, right, with the pasta jars, and just with the moisture and the coldness, you know, things are drawn together. There's a short on this, uh, on this switch. <laughs> so I have to use a little tape, and it goes out on me every now and then. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's not, that's not harmful, because the jar is in a stagnant state dormant right so that's why I put cornmeal which I'm gonna do that one box I have because I've got two more boxes coming now I could for convenience purposes and for saving costs right because jars get expensive okay I could and I'm debating on whether I should take at least one box and bag it up like I would wheat a wheat kernel and just put it away so that I have my cornmeal that can be incorporated into other foods in the event that the food supply becomes more limited because other product other product developers that rely on corn can't get the corn so now you know you're having limited access to the number of products that you can buy that you would normally find in a grocery store. I don't know. I mean, you can make corn corn chips with uh, cornmeal. You can make the just the little breads, the little flat flat breads. Right? You can make cornbread if you wanted to. I mean, you could incorporate that into burgers if you wanted to. I don't know about going as far as making corn syrup, you know, when you can just simply pick up apples from a tree that, you know, that dropped apples, get those apples that aren't concentrated with waxes and that kind of stuff on them in terms of buying them in a grocery store. And you can peel those apples and make your own apple peel syrup, which is good, which is regular white sugar, right? So it's not necessary, per se, to have corn syrup, but definitely corn is a high-calorie food. And if our food supply goes down to more of a staple-type diet versus a choice and convenient type diet 
you're going to want those calories in terms of convenient. What I mean, like you go to the grocery store and you can buy a pre-made TV dinner or pre-made lasagna pack packet of some kind or that kind of stuff, right? Versus going buying it pre-made, you're going to have to find a way to make it yourself and you may not have all the available ingredients because the ingredients just aren't there. And that's why you would go as far as ordering cornmeal because corn is a real issue globally right now. Right? And same thing with wheat. Right? So anyway, I have chosen to sacrifice these jars <laughs> for a box of cornmeal and we're going to see what we get with that. I'm going to try and get these black eyed peas out of here before the next box comes in. And I've got these beautiful jars. Four quart. And four of those. These are the jars I tell Tisha. Now, whatever you do, don't sell these jars <laughs> when I'm gone. <laughs> because they're expensive and they're the best because they keep out 99 at least 99 percent of the UV rays of light out of them so I get to fill those up today hopefully with something right and then I have to move things around I um I dehydrated these I'm going to do this again. This was a, some I, not, my, not my idea. Other people have done it on YouTube. <laughs> so I thought I'd try it. And if I can freeze, sorry, if I can dehydrate it, if I could dehydrate, if I could dehydrate frozen vegetables from Pasta Granny's place when I did that, and it worked out fine. Right, I knew it would. Then I could go to the grocery store and buy myself a few bags of frozen peas and a few bags of frozen corn and I can just rinse them off, throw them in the dehydrator after they are unthawed. That's one bag, of that was one big bag of frozen peas that were in my freezer for God knows how long <laughs> and they're delicious they're really really good so I, I really like this and I like putting them in the jar because the jar doesn't leach plastic and if you don't open the jar and especially if you take out the oxygen whether through you know through a vacuum seal or oxygen absorber it will stay forever in the right conditions all right, and even then, after the fact, you know, I got stuff from 2011 still sitting up in containers that I dehydrated when Fukushima blew its stack. You can take that. If you don't like it, just grind it up. Use it for plant food. <laughs> right? You know, as you, when you start your plants, you can just mix it into the dirt lightly, and it would work fine. So you're not you're not really losing on anything other than maybe your time now and even then you know if you don't work for it you don't get it right this is uh, that caramelized coconut butter that I did it's it's actually pretty good like I said when I finished it tasted almost the same the only thing that changed because I left it in the oven and went to sleep right was was the color but I've been giving it to Amari I've been giving it to Amari about a teaspoon or so at a time and it's been working people he's been having softer poos on his own on his own on his own that's amazing that's amazing right so I would recommend getting um, 
yourself some coconut butter and if you have to rejar it up depending on the amount that you buy and how you buy it and uh, keep it on hand right because um, if your diet is changing and here's another thing to think about if if you're finding that your diet is changing because the food supply is changing something like this could be a natural laxative to help compensate for foods that maybe you're not used to eating all the time I'm just saying <laughs> you have to kind of think outside the box now this video already is getting too long I haven't really said anything new outside of the point of this exercise was just to bring you into the kitchen on the fly just to show you what I'm up to <laughs> right and what I'm thinking and why I'm thinking it like I said I'm conspiring in my head how I can jimmy the money for another hundred and fourteen dollars so I can get myself another fifty pounds of the rife wheat because I like the idea that you can make good crackers with it <laughs> right and then once I get that and put it away with the rest of the wheat honestly I don't think I'm going to be ordering wheat too much after that because you know I'm, I'm pretty good with it right and then it's just a matter of learning how to use it correctly and then I guess that's when the videos will change right but in the meantime <laughs> you see what's going on here right so yeah first thing is don't get frustrated even if you're doing it in the dark blind as a bat <laughs> right make sure your jars are clean and dry now I washed these yesterday last night and they've been sitting out but it only takes that one little speck of moisture to create a problem in your jar okay so go the little extra mile and just make sure there's not even one drop okay now there was something I was gonna say what was it I can't remember you know oh what was it oh yeah I said to my son oh I don't know two days ago when I was downstairs briefly right because I told him I, I need to do this for a few days right before I can go back down and pick up where I left off down there right I said you do realize I said if something happens <laughs> right with nuclear war or whatever right bombs start going off I have to bring the kids downstairs eh He didn't even bat an eye, people. He said, yeah. I know. He said, yeah. That made me feel good that he was aware. And he was up for the challenge. Right? That's the times that we face. Unfortunately, we shouldn't even have to be thinking about these things. I mean, it's, I said to him, as if we don't have enough problems, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And my landlady and her husband, both of them, even though my husband needs surgeries, yeah, I guess he's not going to take them now, right? Because he, he's, you know, it's, he could die, right? <laughs> 81 and 82 years old, flying off to India. And just out of the blue. I said, you're flying to India. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, she told me yesterday. I said, why? She says, well, because I have money there. I said, okay, and? didn't even dawn on me people I said okay so so what you doing she said, I'm going shopping I said shopping in India right and she goes yeah so because I guess her grandson out here is getting married and she says there's only certain things that you can buy in India right but I think it goes a little more than that I think it goes with the fact that banks are starting starting to shut down because I said, oh, are you going to go see family, right? And she says, no. I have no more family in India, but I know they own property out there. My landlord kind of is the same way with the people in India in terms of the way he is with me by letting us stay <laughs> and pay what we can afford versus kicking us out so they can make more money, right? And... Uh, 
So I know they have land that they, they lease out. I think to farmers or something, some kind of land. And, uh, but it's more than that. It probably has stuff to do with the banking system collapsing. Uh -huh. And she just didn't know how to tell me that. Not that she didn't want to tell me. It's just that maybe she didn't know how to tell me because she herself is probably panicking. <laughs> and that's why they're flying off to India now. To which I wouldn't blame them if that's the case, right? You know, they want to secure their assets before anything really bad happens, you know? So, but to be 81 years old and 82 years old flying off uh, in a time like this, she says, pray for me. <laughs> I said, well, are, you know, are you sure? Are you sure you're going to go fly off? She goes, yeah, yeah, we have to. And, uh, and I'm like, okay. She goes, yeah, pray for me. She hasn't been feeling that well either. Well, we already know my feelings on that one, right? But they feel like they have no choice. So let's pray for my landlords, okay? Everybody take a moment and, you know, get back safely. Get to your wherever you got to go, do what you got to do, and get back, back home safely. All right. And hopefully a war won't break out in, in the interim, in between that time. Because if it does, I'm going to have to take the kids downstairs and, I don't know, blanket them off. All right. Try and keep them out of the elements for a while. So that's another reason I like jars. Because uh, if there was high radiation in the environment and things got contaminated, it, I would think a jar would be uh, a well. Well, radiation can pretty much travel through anything, though. That's the thing. Except for maybe lead. Right. Is it, it's lead that it can't travel through. But barriers help. See there. Now I'm all ready. And I'm very curious to see what this cornmeal looks like. Not that we can see anything in the dark here. <laughs> but uh, I have to get a pair of scissors or something. Here we go. And cut this bag. I try and save my bags as best as I can. Because you never know, you might need them. I'm trying not to cut the bag. All right? I'm trying not to cut the bag. Now, if I was to do anything after I get my other 50 pounds of cornmeal, which is just regular cornmeal. Can you see me? Which is just regular cornmeal. And I chose regular cornmeal for the um, calorie content versus organic cornmeal, which for whatever reason has less calories. Um, now that I've got two more 25, 25 pound boxes of regular cornmeal coming, I've got this one, so that's 75 pounds of regular cornmeal. If I was to break down in a month or two from now and wanted to just top off, because I already got, that's when I would buy 25 pounds of organic cornmeal. And being that it would be slightly different than regular, you can mix the two together in your cooking projects. But have peace of mind knowing that you've got a fair amount of cornmeal in a high calorie, high calorie content, right? We're just going to look at this briefly here. I'm just going to put a little bit in a jar. I'm going to taste it. This is what I'm doing today, do you see? I figure I can do this in the dark. It doesn't take much to think about it, <laughs> right? 
What's important is that you keep busy and you stay productive. Right? See? Let me see. Don't you don't smell nothing. Right? The jar is neutral. Now we're gonna taste it. Well, what I like about buying in bulk is it's a no fuss method. When it comes to uh, repackaging, however you're going to do that. In terms of, if you were to go to the grocery store and buy little bags of cornmeal at three, four dollars a bag until you met 25 pounds, you'd have to come home and cut each bag open and, you know, go through, I don't know how many bags, at least 25 because they probably only sell them in one pound bags in the grocery store. I don't know what the dollar amount, you'd have to sit down and figure out what the dollar amount was, but it, it, this came in at two ninety nine a pound. Now mind you, that was an American funds, but it still was cheaper for me to order from the United States from nut.com 50 pounds and have it shipped to me at no cost versus buying it in Canada through Organic Matters and having to pay a bit more for shipping. It was still cheaper through the exchange rate. And because it comes in one big box and one big bag, right? When it comes to time to do stuff like this, it goes fairly fast. So that's how I recommend doing it. Now, that didn't taste too bad. It was mild. And it was very finely ground up. To the point where it almost dissolved in my mouth. I didn't find it to be that gritty. There's a few pieces left in my mouth. It will definitely make good, good uh, flour. Mm-hmm. I think so. So, on my shopping list for future things to buy would be one box of organic just to see what the difference was between the two of them. But then knowing that I could combine the two together when I wanted to. Right? Because, you know, some people find that stuff important, right? <clears throat> In terms of eat, eating more organic, that is. Okay, so now I'm crashing here because I'm listening to Dr. God, Dr. Death, whatever she is to you in the province of British Columbia, Canada, going on with her sales pitch with their, you know, inoculations and their other, two other inoculations that are coming in on the market, <laughs> but are still basically experimental, okay? Anyway, I don't know trying to gaslight the general public, right? So, here's the cornmeal. So we got 12 full quart sized jars, two larger ones. That's 1.9 liter per jar. Then I put just some black eyed peas in one jar, because these ones I just washed, right? And then I did three jars of those mung beans that are not organic, or wait a minute, they are organic. Those ones are, are or, organic, but they're not meant for sprouting, although they do sprout, which means you can sprout them and then fry them in into your meals after they sprout. And they make, a, they, make a, they make a bean sprout, right? Just don't eat them raw. And then we've got, what is this? This is the yam and sweet potato mixed up together. That's a full jar. It's not sealed though, right? And I've got a few of these downstairs as well sweet potato and then because my freezer unthawed these are English walnuts that were unthawed from 2018 I ate them they're good so instead of putting them now I did put one little pack that was vacuum sealed back into the freezer but outside of that 
all the other ones I just open it up and I put into one jar like this and one jar like this. I still have black walnuts in the freezer but they're in a different freezer. Uh, nuts like to be in a very cool 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 place actually colder than a fridge. Um, I'm not going to put them in the fridge because they don't really like humidity so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an oxygen absorber into each jar here that's why you can see the lids come off because when you do that you have to work fast so what I'm going to do in between listening to something that clearly upsets me and I shouldn't be wasting my time with it but besides that point I'd like to know what the hell's going on out here where I live right if I could leave the country I would okay if I could leave the country if I could leave the province I would but I can't so in the meantime I still have three packs of these unopened <clears throat> so I'm going to move these jars out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to move these jars out of the way. I'm going to bring out my vacuum sealer. Because once I do these jars, fast, fast, fast. I take what's left and I put it in a vacuum sealer bag and I quickly vacuum seal it <coughs> to preserve what little bit left I have. Because, you know, as soon as you expose them to the air, they start activating so and then after I get these done right then I'm going to take them downstairs and then I'm going to get into my little cubby over here where I have a lot of these jars with spices in them but I didn't seal them all okay so I'm just going to go through them and I'm going to see what's sealed and what's not sealed in terms of like using the vacuum sealer. Because for the ones that aren't sealed, I'm going to bring them out and I'm going to follow up with this. Because those ones are more for long term. So I just kind of want to keep them in a really, really nice dormant state. And then eventually, and then eventually what's going to end up happening is... When I'm back downstairs, I have other jars that I already did and then took down, but didn't use these, right? So at that point, when I come across those jars, then I will take them out and, and do this and then put them back, right? But that's just, a, you know, a handful, maybe a case or two downstairs that need that done to it. All right. So that's where I'm going with that. And then after these are done... And downstairs, I'll go wash some more jars because I'm doing the little bit of miscellaneous things that I still have left over. And then I'll probably get Tisha to go buy me some more jars in preparation for, um, you know, the next batch of cornmeal. And uh, the beans coming in because the thing that I like about doing it in quart size jars <coughs> like this okay that's the cornmeal that's a whole case what I like about that is because it's not canned in a pressure canner or canned in a water bath so therefore you don't really have to worry about the jar popping if it should pop because sometimes it even happens with a vacuum seal or with an oxygen absorber but it's not like this food is going to actually spoil as if it was meat sitting in a jar or a vegetable or something like that so in that situation you can stack and pack your cases because it's just dry goods right so I will probably do two more full cases of this because I know what I get and I think I still have a little bit just a little bit left in a bag right 
So it fills up one whole case plus two 1.9 liters. So I need that amount of jars times two to compensate for the two more boxes that come in. And I might have to order some more oxygen absorbers because oxygen absorbers because I only have three packs of these. But then once I'm done, I'm done. I just right. I I I, I don't really want to vacuum seal the cornmeal into brown bags and then plastic. I would prefer to have them in jars. The wheat, you know, if I ordered that rife wheat, then yeah, I would do that. But I've got also wheat downstairs that's still sitting in a bag that needs to be packaged up. <coughs> but I might go as far as ordering another 50 pounds of the rife wheat only because it's so versatile, right? In terms of crackers and just the whole bagels, the whole nine yards, right? And, and the fact that it's ancient wheat too, right? And wheat will last, if stored correctly, for thousands of years, like they do in the pyramids. <laughs> right? Not that I'm trying to go for a thousand year mark here, but, right? So that's, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to get back on that as I listen to Dr. God, Dr. Death, and, you know, trying to bite my thumbs. No, sorry. Trying to, okay, I'm going to do that, right? Uh, trying to bite my tongue. Right? I'm not trying to corrupt this video with corrupt politics. Okay? But I know a salesperson when I see one. Okay? And it, that pressure to buy is so strong out in British Columbia, Canada. This individual quoted something like 11 million shots have already been given out to the population in my province. 11 million. That's a lot, people. I, I don't know how that number jumped up like that. And then, of course, you know, she gaslighting you with that. Well, we've got 40, and I'm just into, I'm just going into the video, right? She's saying that currently, through their statistics, at you know, within hospitals and that type of thing, which I take with a grain of salt, because right, I know how they can be manipulated, right, to suit their agenda. She says that 47% of the individuals that are currently in ICU, I guess, or in the hospital or whatever, are related to being non-inoculated. And then she goes on to say, but even though we've got, you know, all these inoculated people at 53%, 53% in the hospital, somehow it's still... I'm at a greater risk. She put 47% of people in the hospital with their illness that they're trying to inoculate people against is only 8% of the population who have not been inoculated, but they're 40%, 47% in numbers in the hospital compared to 53% of 89% uh, of the population being inoculated. So she's just playing with numbers, that's what I'm saying. Right? She's just playing with numbers because you can go somewhere else, listen to somebody else doing a different video that's gone into these hospitals and they'll put testimony to where, you know, some of the wards are shut down, not even in operation, or, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're just skewing the numbers, people, right? So anyway, I can't worry about it because I'll go down swinging one way or another, all right? You know, like I said to my son, as if we don't have enough to worry about being terrorized in our own province by complete strangers who have absolutely no right to infringe themselves into your life. Okay? And now we have to worry about taking the kids and creating a bunker in the basement right, to protect them from radiation. And uh, who knows? Who knows what will come from it if it should happen? 
right? Like I said, the hydro could go out, you know. I mean, uh, if the hydro goes out, I can still provide heat. You know, I can still cook food, you know, because of the fireplace. I've got the rocket stove and the fire pit out in the back, right? You know, so i got the cast iron pots. Did you know that you can start, and we're going to do this one day, people. I'm actually looking forward to it. You start your cast iron pot boiling away with some beans in it. You take it off the fire or stove or wherever you got it. Let's just say you're doing it on a fire and you're short on wood, okay? Or you want to, you know, space it out a little bit, right? You can take that cast iron pot, go find yourself a basket of some kind or something, something to put a blanket inside and then put your pot in the middle of the blanket, right? Cover it up and let it sit there for a couple, two, three hours and it will continue to cook your chicken and your potatoes or whatever it is that you got in there. See, that's the beauty about a cast iron pot or frying pan. It will do that because it can retain the heat. So I've got that base covered, <laughs> right? So anyway, you just do what you can in the day, right? That's that's what I'm trying to do right now. And, uh, you know, guesstimate how many more jars I need, right? It's an investment because once they're empty, see, and here's another thing I, why I like doing it this way too. The lid on this jar is brand new. So... If I uh, decide to uh, empty out the jar, if I decide to empty out the jar, I can still can with the lid. Mm -hmm. I tried to figure out what was cheaper. If you buy th four, and this was the last time I bought these things, okay? If you buy four one-gallon jugs with metal lid lids, which I would recommend before plastic, one they'll last longer. And uh, I would think if you're using um, oxygen absorbers with it, it would just be better, right? So I would recommend using metal lids with the one-gallon jugs, Four of them cost anywhere between $68 and $76. We already went through that, right? What they are charging now, I don't know. But if I buy a... Oh, I was, how does this work? If I buy... If I buy 12 one-liter jars... I'm going to come back to you on the math on that one. Because I think if you go off and get quart-sized jars, 12 of them, you get a little more volume in terms of versus depending on four-gallon jars. One-gallon jars, right? Because <laughs> it gets expensive after a while and you, you know, I mean... In the day when I was buying all those one-gallon jars, it wasn't a big deal because, you know, I kind of had the money, right? Now it's like, well, do I really want to spend $72 on four jars when I can take that $72 and buy, oh, God, three or four cases of one-liter side jars, which would maybe give me more volume, right? And not only that, but I can stack and pack them case over case over case because they're dry goods and if they happen to pop one out of a case it's not going to be disrupting your food supply because when you can with the pressure canner and the water canner technically you're not supposed to put anything on top of your jars unless of course they're really really light you can maybe do that right you know 
Maybe. Only if you have to. So it just gets a little more complicated to store those ones away where they're not being, you know, compromised where they might pop. Like this bone broth. Right? I can't come along and put another case of jars over top of it. This could sit on top of this bottom box, top box. That would work. Right? So when you're dealing with a case, it's just case on case. So it just makes it a little easier to uh, work with. Where those one gallon ones, you know, I put them in the box, like I put the stuff in the jar, and then I put the jars back into the boxes. And then I put the whole box right into the shelf so that it's protected from any light as well, right? And any temperature fluctures, fluctuations. Anyway, I'm supposed to be done with all this, right? But I am. I'm at the tail end of things, right? I'm looking at the. I'm. The yard is calling me soon. So I, my landlady and her husband, they're going to India. I should actually phone her today and see if I can get that phone number for that clinic that she, the eye, the eye clinic. It's just to go get glasses and that kind of thing. So I can maybe make an appointment to get an appointment for an eye specialist. But again, I don't know how that's going to work, people. Right? I lift up Amari every day. I'm constantly lifting, pushing, pulling, lift, just whatever, you know. <laughs> but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So that's what I'm doing. And I guess at some point I'll come back. Okay, and then for Amari, trying something different here. He likes egg with butter, with sliced cheese because it's it doesn't gum up as much, right? But what I did, normally I mash this as it's cooking, but what I did is I took some of the uh, dehydrated sweet potato and yam, and I just sprinkled it on top. And then I put the cheese on top, and then I had the lid on to soften up the sweet potato and the uh, yam. And because I took more of the powdery powdery, it just blending in there real nice for him, people. That's what I'm trying to say. Right? So, of course, I'll mash everything up. And then I gave him just plain Greek yogurt because he'll eat it. But I'm going to give him the rest of these grapes that I canned. You can see there's not very many left. I'll bust those up. There goes that light. I'll bust those up. And then I'll take a bit of the juice because there's just a little bit left, you can see. I'm going to mix it in with that. And because these are really soft, they break up pretty easy. I just have to check for skins. I'll mix it into there, put his egg beside here, and that's, that's a great little meal for him. Okay, so... We're, we're trying it now, and as I'm sitting here, because I know there's not a lot of calories in this, because the egg itself is only... Andre, turn that down. I'm not going to be here very long. The egg itself is only 60 calories. You like that, eh? Mmm. Yeah. Right? I don't know how much one slice of that processed cheese is, but... I didn't... I used butter, about a tablespoon of butter... Right? I, I I don't have time to figure out calories for everything that I do just yet. But just the way I put that dehydrated... And don't forget... <coughs> <coughs> don't forget that uh, dehydrated yam and potato had already been baked. So it's it's already cooked, people. 
right? I dehydrated it, Cook. Okay? And uh, so anyway, you know, sprinkling it on top of the egg as it was, you know, cooking on low and then put the cheese on top and then just turn off the burner and put the lid on and let it sit for like five, ten minutes or whatever it was. You looking, you see how he's looking? He says, mmm, this tastes good. I, and when, after I put his food into the bowl here, I tasted the fork with the egg and the cheese and the potato, sweet potato and yam and butter. And it almost had a nutty taste. It, like, it was really good. Obviously, you can see he's whining for it. He likes it. And, uh... Why couldn't I do that with cornmeal? That 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 cornmeal almost melted in my mouth, people. That's what I'm trying to say. And because cornmeal, because of the corn, has a high calorie count. So as long as I don't overdo it, in terms of throwing a lot on there, but I could have sprinkled a little bit of cornmeal right along with the sweet potato, right? And cooked it the same way. Come here. Cooked it the same way. And because it's so fine, like it's even finer than store bought, right? I think I think that would work out really good in terms of boosting up that calorie count, right? You know, without constipating him. And I don't think the taste, like the, that taste of that cornmeal, I know this is good. That, that taste of the cornmeal, it was very mild, like extremely mild. So I don't even think he would notice it, right? But it would definitely boost up his calorie count. And I wouldn't have to give him a lot in every meal. I could space it out. Yeah, yeah it's good stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I know, eh? Good boy. You're getting so much better with the spoon. Huh? And he grabbing. He grabs onto me so he can pull himself up now. Yeah, is that a new milestone? You know you can grab on me. He's got his hands on my knee right now. Look how he's sitting up nice people. Huh? Look at that. Yeah. He's figuring it out. Yes, he is. So, I'm either giving him egg straight up by itself, or I'm mixing it in a little bit with that yogurt that has the grapes cut up and just a little bit of juice. And because there was hardly any juice left, I just drank it. <laughs> right. So this year, I'm going to be canning more grapes, for sure. Right? I wasn't too sure how they would work out, but they worked out really good. Those ones are seedless. Oh boy, you're making a mess. That's one thing about having a, a child with disability like this. You get a lot of laundry. <laughs> right? A lot of laundry. So when I move, I want to make sure I have a really nice laundry room. Yeah. With a dryer. <laughs> Not that I would use it all the time because I wouldn't. But it's nice to have access to. I don't go up and down the stairs to do laundry, so I hang everything up after I wash it in my uh, ringer washer, which I like. You know, to add the one that agitates. I like that one because I can control the water. I can, can stop it if I want it. I can soak it. I can do whatever I want. I can move mm. things around. I like it. But I don't have a dryer. So I hang everything up. Mmm. What's that? That's a big bite of yogurt. Did you taste it? Something different, huh? Yeah. But you like it. Yeah. Uh, I bought two jugs of milk two days ago, and I'm already down to less than a full jug, 
and one jug mm -hmm. is already gone. <laughs> so, so much for making yogurt until I go get some more milk. So maybe later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe later on because I wanted to try and make yogurt. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I give them a fair amount of yogurt, and of course I want the ones, the one that's. This is just plain, nothing in it. I mix other foods in with it, and he likes it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yes, it is. Huh? Is it good stuff? Good stuff. Look how fast he can eat this. No problem. Yeah. So, now that that cornmeal is here, I could do the same idea. Now, mind you, I'm working in teaspoons, right? So, I don't know how many calories is in cornmeal at maybe one or two teaspoons at a time. You know, he's not, he's not a man, right? He's not even a big boy. He's just a little guy. And we don't want to back him up. So I should probably try and figure out what helps to digest corn. Like you have to be careful what you mix it with, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you sure like this, don't you? Yeah. Okay, hold on. So after this, I'm going to go and put those oxygen absorbers in those jars. Try and take a few downstairs. Or let them seal first, see how they seal. I, I, I think they're 300 cc, these oxen absorbers, which technically, if that's the case, all it needs is one, one pack per jar, but for the quart size anyway. But I'm not, I don't know. I, so... He hardly bites the spoon anymore. Just sometimes his mouth will lock. He doesn't mean he doesn't mean to. He he understands. And then there's other times he'll just do it because he knows it annoys me. And he's just being silly. Look at that. You ate it all. There you go. All done. So that worked really good with the egg. Don't you see? You, now you're playing. I know. I know when he's playing. He's playing now. <laughs> I find mixing the egg like that, it's just better for him. This, you know, depending on the texture. All right. You done? Was it good? Was it good? Yeah, maybe something else? I'll go get you something else. Hold on. What are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to end this video now. <laughs> I'm going to end it on this. Okay, what happened was... I bought I bought the the water fermenters. Okay. I got the Ohio stoneware two gallon crock, which I'm gonna bring up very soon, and I'm gonna use that to make sauerkraut. And then I'm gonna water bath the sauerkraut and can it. Right. And then I was hoping to get I was I was hoping to get I'll hold it. I was hoping to get a three gallon water fermenter from Ohio Stoneware, but through the shipping and everything, because it comes from Texas, right? I don't know. It just wasn't possible. So then I was given the option to get back my money or I could get a Roots for Harvest water fermenter. 3.6 gallons or 3.9 gallons. It's a little more than three gallons. It's quite big, people. I think I brought it out 
of the box and there's a video on it. Anyway, when I brought it out, it had gotten chipped in here. And then they tried to repair it by putting something over it. And because it was so thin, the rim was very thin. I know, anyway, long story short, I let the people who ordered it that I got it from know. They contacted the company that sold it to them, right, called Lems. Anyway, um, they're, they're a distributor for Roots and Harvest. And long story short, they gave me a, a gift certificate of $125. So then, now I have $125 US to spend on their website. <laughs> I still have that water fermenting crock. It's downstairs. They said I can keep it. So maybe we'll attempt to use it or not. I don't know. I'm a little scared because it just, I asked him, like, are you sure it's not going to, you know, because it just seems like it's, it's thin, right? But anyway, that's for another day. So I ended up ordering this little butter maker. <laughs> oh, it's kind of cute. I got some sprouting seeds, a couple of books. Uh, let's see. Making cheese, butter, and yogurt. It's just a very thin little thing. I've got other books, okay? I didn't know what to buy. Healing herbs, wines, vinegars, and syrups. And then a thin little book. <clears throat> uh, medical herbs. Okay, and I've got another survival book here. Anyway, immune defense. 104 recipes, so we'll get into that. And then this little butter maker thing came with its own little book, too. Okay. <coughs> Roots and Harvest Lems, L E M customer service, okay? I'm just saying. Okay? This is the little butter thing. It's by hand. In case the power goes out. <laughs> right? Okay? It, 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 this jar, oh, it's nice. It's sturdy. But if for whatever reason it gets broken, you can just use a standard wide mouth mason jar. But this is thicker than a mason jar. I'm just letting you know. So I'm really impressed with this. Like, really impressed, actually. And then it came... I didn't even know these things existed. But I guess you put your butter in there after you make it. You put about a third cup of clean water in there. And then you go like that. And you just change the water every few days. And apparently your butter can sit on the counter for 30 days and it will just stay basically fresh. <laughs> okay. And this is, this is really nice too. I really like this. It came with two little paddles so that after you take it out of your little butter turner, you know, you press it, right? <laughs> it was like $69 US. If you go online on Amazon... I guess this is a little product review that I haven't even used the product yet, but from what I can tell, it's a quality product in, in this situation, right? If you order this on Amazon, all you get is this. <laughs> you don't get that. You don't get the paddles. 
And I don't even think you, well, you probably do get the directions with the little bit of recipes in it. Outside of that, they wanted $91 Canadian just for that. Whereas if you go to that company, Roots and Harvest, LEM, in Ohio, they're going to give you a little more. Okay? And it's only $69 US. Okay? I don't know what that works out in, in, in um, American funds, but besides that point. And then... Oh, what do we got? Oh, yeah. <sighs> and then, because I had $125, I spent more than $125 US, oh, that's the thing. And then, because they, I was ordering, right, I just thought, to hell with it, just get what you want, right, that you, right? So this is, this is liner for um, a dehydrating screen. It's 14 inches long. No, sorry. 84 inches long. I don't know what that is in feet. But it's a fair amount. 14 inches wide. I was thinking of the uh, microgreens. I may try and use that with growing microgreens. And because it's food safe, it should be fine, right? So I got two rolls of that. There's only one here, but I bought two of them. Okay. And then, you know, because it was being shipped, right, I, I noticed they had sprouting seeds. So what happened with the sprouting seeds is they had three different kinds. I took two of each per kind. But for whatever reason, two didn't make it. They only sent me four. Okay? <laughs> so, of course, I phoned them up. And I said, well, gee, you know, everything's good except I am missing two sprouting packs. Right? Anyway, it's in the mail now. No problem. They didn't say anything. Just, right... Now, where it got expensive was, it was $69 U.S. to have it shipped. I had to pay for shipping. <coughs> and then, there, they weren't too sure if there was going to be a duty cost. But when it got delivered, I ended up having to pay $40 Canadian for, for customs before I could get my package. So 69, 40, that's 110. And then we'll just say another 15, 20 dollars. Oh no, it's not that much. Maybe 15 dollars for the for the exchange rate. So 110. We'll just say but cost me about 125 dollars to have it delivered. That's where the money went. So if you're in the States, I'm sure it would be a lot cheaper. <laughs> Right, because you're not having to pay the exchange rate. What I'm trying to say is, is the company, if you're looking for this kind of stuff, or just go look, right? They have different crock pots. Obviously, if you live in the States, chances are you're going to get yourself an Ohio crock pot, which I highly recommend that you get. They're made in Texas. Right, They're, it's a family operated business, but normally they don't ship to Canada. The only reason I got lucky and got one is because good to go dot go, right? Or right, they ordered, and I was one of the lucky ones to get one of those intact. Where a lot of them that came across the border apparently were all busted up and everything, and then because of what's been going on, you know, they haven't been able to produce as much. And uh, so they don't technically ship to Canada. So I'm one of the lucky ones that have one. But if you live in the States, you can buy one more than likely, assuming that they're available. Right? So I'm just saying that's you can go and 
go on LEMS, L-E-M's, uh, Roots and Harvest, and you'll see they have quite a few um, Ohio crock pots for selection if you're an American. But other than that, like for, for you know, right? I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm unhappy with this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Looking forward to using it soon. As a matter of fact, I just bought some cream. So, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to get rid of this miscellaneous stuff that's like kicking around that like for example you know a couple two three months ago or a month ago or whenever I bought the organic uh, baking soda which is you know going to be for cooking not for cleaning so I'm going to put I'm going to jar this up as well right <coughs> and then we've got the um <coughs> uh, the baking powder with no aluminum so I got to jar that up. Just little things like that, right? I finished up the mung beans today, right? I, I have, I, I bought, when I was with Tisha, I bought, uh, just to keep it easy on myself, for a little while anyway, in terms of um, jars and that kind of stuff. You know, I still have to buy jars, but... I'm trying to avoid the one gallon ones. I still may break down. It depends. Right? But for now, I might just take some of those beans and just put them in these. Right? I have these around the house, but they've got other things in them. Because I just want to clear out the kitchen so I can get on with other things. But we know I've got another 50 pounds of cornmeal, which, like I said, now that I did this With the Mari, with the egg, the way I did it, that cornmeal is so fine that I don't see why I couldn't do that a teaspoon or so at a time right along with that, right? But before I do that, I would, I don't know, like cook it up maybe a little bit first just to see how fast it cooks up and right because you want to make it digestible for him right but that's a high calorie food so if I used one tablespoon we'll see somehow incorporated into his meal with a vegetable that's easy to digest or something that's easy to digest that would work in terms of boosting up that calorie count because that's my that's my biggest issue right because you don't want to stuff them with a lot of meat and you know a lot of heavy heavy things because you know god forbid people so far he's been having bowel movements on his own and it's been soft since i've re basically removed those drinks yeah it's a it, big difference big difference but i'm probably a little low on the calorie count all right so we're working on it In terms of what those women want. All right. And then I just took a couple of these jars. <clears throat> this was some old curry spice that I had in a container in a storage room area that's in my bedroom. You can see. All right. So I emptied out one full one and then just took a bit more. And put it in one of these jars and it I, I did put the oxygen absorber in there now whether they work or not I don't know honestly I don't really like using them because it makes me nervous <laughs> right because you gotta work fast and you feel like you're not working fast enough and you can feel them start heating up and you know and but I got a few more packs, so I'll finish them up, and then we'll just carry on from there. Here's some old chili powder. I just put it in there. And then I'm uh, starting to go into my own jars. This is what I'll be cooking with up here. So as I find these jars, I'll go about replacing them. 
right? So eventually, uh, these one no. Nope. Eventually, these ones will be up in here more so than these ones, right? Those ones keep out the light. Now it says it can take a couple hours for these things to start popping down. I don't see nothing popping down. Now, mind you, it's only been a half an hour, so I'm just going to leave them here and see what happens. <laughs> and then what I do, after I'm done using what I'm using, these were 300 cc. The only thing that maybe I did wrong is I should have put maybe two of these in my 1.9 liter versus one per jar. Right, so it's a little iffy whether those ones will seal. Otherwise, these ones just went, you see, it's already changing color. Yeah. Doesn't take long. It used to be an orange, now it's it's getting changing color. I have to vacuum seal it, right? That's why I don't, you know, I don't like working with these too much. But vacuum sealing powdery, powdery food is, even if you use a coffee thing, I don't really like it. It doesn't really work very well. And, uh, you know, the more finer it is, the less it works, right? And it gets up into your, it kind of ruins your, your uh, vacuum sealer, right? And then the jar will pop anyway. <laughs> so. Okay, so now I'm done. For this part, okay. See? And it, and just, oh, and oh yes, I'm going to link a video to a video that I seen today in regards to um, farmers, commercial farmers, and what they're up against today in terms of, you know, cost of gas and not being able to get fertilizers or if they do it's expensive and just the whole nine yards, right? Do you see? And anyway, it's it's a very wholesome video. It, you know, kind of reminds me back in the day when my kids were young. My kids used to be young, right? And I was a free-spirited parent where, you know, my kids could actually get dirty, <laughs> climb on things, and just be playful and adventurous, right? So anyway, you know, I'm watching, watching, made a couple comments, watching, watching. And then th th this this farmer, right, the guy, the father, right, he asked the farmer, he says, he says, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, not that that makes any difference. Now my face is as dark as could be. He says, well, if there's any suggestions or advice in terms of what you predict for the future, in terms of having corn, having wheat, having the things that are going into short supply for various different reasons, you know what was the first thing that popped out of his mouth, people? Have canning jars. Oh, man. Oh, there's one jar just popped. One jar just popped. Did you hear it? <laughs> Having That came from a commercial farmer in terms of if you're going to prepare it for anything, what would you want most in your kitchen? Canning jars, he said. Because canning jars you can do so much with. Right? They're cumbersome in the fact that they can get heavy. But they protect the food really, really good. That's the thing. And, you know, you can, you can pressure can, you can water bath, you can dry store, right? That's what I did today, dry storing, right? Whether you have oxygen absorbers or not, if you don't, if you run out of electricity, get yourself a brake bleeder. If you don't have one already, and you can vacuum seal your own jars. Now, I haven't used this yet, but if I had to, I got it. 
And maybe after everything's all said and done, okay, and, you know, I got a little more organized, everything's all put away, and I'm not bringing more into the house, and, you know, I open this up for Amari, right, take out, put in there, screw the thing back on, all you need is the proper attachment with a brake bleeder. You don't have to bring out your uh, vacuum sealer all the time. And of course that's common knowledge on YouTube for preppers, right? That's nothing I discovered. I learned that from other preppers. <laughs> I just haven't done it yet. But I did go as far as getting a brake bleeder for that purpose. Right? So what I'm saying is you don't have to use oxen absorbers if you didn't if you don't want to. Some people vow by them. Other people say, I don't know. I just prefer just taking out the oxygen or the air. It's not oxygen, but the air through vacuum sealing. There, another jar just popped. So by the time Tisha comes, these should be all nicely popped for me. And uh, she can help me to take them down. If these larger jars don't seal, they should, they should, because you only need 150 cc's. You need a, anywhere between 100 to 150 cc's for a quart size jar, depending on what's inside. These are 300 cc's, right? So it should be more than enough. And you can have more than required it won't affect your food okay but you don't want to go less so that's it that's the end of the video I don't know whether you liked it or not hey this is nice people I really like this so we'll be making butter soon this Now I'm just going to make some room, move those as much as I can that way, and go wash some more jars to uh, just, like I said, I've got more stuff coming, and I am just going through miscellaneous stuff that I can find that I just want to get out and put away. All right.